Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. What is it that you want, Mary? What do you want? You want the moon? You want the moon? I'll throw a lasso around it and pull it down. Hey, that's a pretty good idea. I'll give you the moon, Mary. I'll take it. Then what? Well, then you can swallow it and it'll dissolve, see? And the moonbeams will shoot out of your fingers and your toes and come out of the ends of your hairs. Am I talking too much? Guy from the distance. Yes, just kiss her already. <laughs> Who can name the movie? Crystal. It's a Wonderful Life. I love that movie. Love that movie. My family used to watch it every year, pretty much, at Christmas time. And George Bailey loved making big promises because he's in love. That scene from that movie kind of comes when he's getting to know her really well and he's starting to realize, hey, I could spend the rest of my life with this lady. I'd really like that. And as he's dreaming about all the things he wants to do in his life, one of those dreams is to give her the world. Or here, to give her the moon. I don't want to spoil the movie if you haven't seen it. Because if you haven't seen it, you should go see it. But I think this spoiler is okay. He didn't lasso the moon. He made a really big promise for love, right? But to lasso the moon? All right, maybe that's stretching it just, just a little bit. That's kind of the theme of the movie, though, because he does do everything he can to, to fulfill his life dreams and his promises to himself and his promises to Mary. But he can't. What drives the whole movie is that he feels like he's failed over and over again to keep the promises he made to all of his friends, all of his neighbors, all those who relied on the bank, and all those who relied on him, especially Mary, as he couldn't give her the moon. He couldn't give her much of anything, he felt. And I'll let you watch the rest from there. But the reason I bring up that movie is because that's a very common theme, not just in movies, but in pretty much every love story on this earth, <laughs> including your own, with those in your life. What do we like to do as human beings? Make grand promises to prove our love. I love you this much. And the sweethearts say, how much do you really love me? I love you enough that if you asked me to jump off this cliff, I probably would. But please don't do that. Or, you know, what's going to happen? Let's say this happens, or that happens, or this happens. Don't worry, honey. I'm not going anywhere. No matter what comes, through thick and thin, I will be there for you. Always and forever. We love making those promises. It sounds good, it feels good to say it. But what's the other thing that's really common with human beings? just like George Bailey. We often fail to keep them. You fail to keep them to someone that you love. As life throws you curveballs, and it's not as easy as you thought when you made the promise. Everything seemed great then, and you couldn't imagine something that would come that you could not face and overcome. And then life totally changed. And you face challenges you never thought possible. And as temptation and trial and changing worldviews and culture and, and those that you counted on abandoned you, you weren't able to keep those promises. And you broke the hearts of those you love most. And it's happened to you, hasn't it? It's happened to you time and time again as people broke their promises to you and left you shattered, heartbroken, 
and in a place where you didn't want to believe that anyone could keep a promise to you ever again. Because if they could break that promise with all of their fluff and all of those words and all of their commitment, how could anyone keep a promise to you again? How could you ever trust that? That's the reality, that's, that's the situation that God has to step into for human beings. A world of broken promises, a world of love that can't quite go far enough, it claims to be love, and yet we as human beings have such a hard time of doing what love actually is. Giving everything to someone else. Everything. You just heard Abraham, and as you were hearing those words, weren't you thinking like, Abraham, you're crazy. Because who could sacrifice their son? Who could love God that much that they would do everything for him? That's our human nature saying, no one loves that much. No one can go that far for God. Not just in our relationship with Him, but in our relationship for others. No one would cross that line if they were put in that situation. Surely there has to be some limit to love and how much we have to sacrifice for someone else. That's our standard mentality about love. And God has to break that all down. Because while all that's true of humanity, that is not true of God. God does not break His promises. And there is nothing that stops His love. Absolutely nothing. That's really hard for people to believe. As I said before, we've been trained. We've seen it all. We've seen broken promises. We've never seen love go that far. And so in Scripture, God has to say over and over and over and over again that this is how much I love you. Because he knows how hard it is for us to believe that God could love us that much. There has to be a limit. There has to be a catch. There has to be something that we do that will, re- that will push him away from us and he'll never listen to us again. There has to be an end. But there's not. Listen to the words that Paul says to us today as he, as he lays this out for us to hear. He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also graciously give us all things along with him? Just think about that first part. And what we just heard from Abraham, God is saying, all right, Take this as your deposit, okay? That I will never stop loving you. I will give you my son, my one and only son. And I will kill him to show my love to you. That's crazy. Just like we thought of Abraham, and if you think about your child, maybe sitting next to you today, And taking them and putting them on an altar. And when they ask you, hey dad, where's the sacrifice? God will provide. And he gets there and he ties them up and he puts them on the altar. And Abraham has that knife in his hand getting ready to strike his own son. Could you do that to your children? Which I know isn't loving, so don't do it. (laughs) Unless God says do it, which he has only done to Abraham. Don't do that. But if you were asked to do something like that for someone else, that's too far. But not for God. That is the craziness of his love. The depth of his love is that he took his perfect son, who was there with him in the beginning, who helped create, who's always loving, always caring, 
always perfectly respecting his father. And he took him and he strapped him to the cross and he nailed him to that tree to die for you. To prove to you that he will love you no matter what. This isn't for God to feel better about himself, that he was willing to do whatever it takes. He does it for you. To show you that he will go to any lengths to save you, to care for you, to rescue you, to love you. And he had to go that far to pay for your sin so that nothing would separate you from him. Not any of the terrible things you've done wrong. The things that you say to yourself, God could not forgive that. And when you say that to God, God says, oh yes I can. Oh yes I can. There's nothing too big that you have done that my son didn't pay for. Don't tell me that he didn't pay enough for you. Don't you dare. Say, I didn't do enough to cover that sin too. Don't doubt how far I will go to save you. Paul's saying, that's God's deposit for you to know that that's in the bank already. He already gave his son. And if he's done that, how will he not along with him graciously give you all things? I mean, think about it. If he has killed his own child, won't he do everything else for you? The little things that you think God can't love you in? The situations where you're in that you think there's no way God could fix it? You don't think that he can cross heaven and hell to get to you? That he can do so much more than lassoing the moon and bringing it in if that's what it takes to love you? The perfect father sacrificed his son. Of course, he will do anything to save you. And this is the beauty of what God has done. As he crosses all of those things that he lists, what will separate us from the love of Christ? He even lists them for us because he knows that they're popping up in our heads. These things will stop God for sure. No. Will trouble or distress or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or danger, or sword? Will any of those things keep you from the love of God? Seriously? You think they're going to stop me? God says. As you get persecuted, as you face danger, as you face more trouble, as you don't have anything, you feel naked and exposed because of all the things you've done and your reputations and tatters and people hate you because what you've done, especially those you love, because you broke promises. But will any of that separate you from the love of God? Neither death nor life, angels nor rulers, things present nor things to come, nor powerful forces, neither height, nor depth, nor anything else in creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. That is a hefty list of promises. And God's not afraid to make them. He knows everything that's coming. He knows everything you will face. He knows your limits and the limits of those who love you. And he knows the pain that you're going to go through or the pain that you have already experienced that has stonewalled your heart against other humans but against God, believing that that kind of love is true. He knows all of that and yet he says, I promise I will go the distance for you. You know, one of the songs I thought of, another section that I thought of as I read this, Ain't no mountain high enough, ain't no river wide enough to keep me from luck getting to you, babe. Where do you remember that song from? For me, to remember the Titans, which is a great story, true story about a a town coming together, even though they were used to being segregated, black and white separate, and they had to integrate the schools, and and well, where does that all hit home? On the football team. 
<laughs> Who are they going to play? How is the coach going to treat the white players and the other coach treat the black players? And how are they going to get along? And then eventually you have them singing that song together in the locker room. And they come together and they show their whole town that, you know what, we can overcome this too through love. Now that in a worldly sense is just a small taste of an example of what God can overcome by his love. As he says, there's no height, there's no depth, there's no width, there's no distance that he cannot get over. And here's another aspect of that that's extremely comforting for you. Because I'm guessing that all of you, as I said, have had your heart broken. Or you have been the one who has broken someone else's heart. You had to say to your loved one, I thought you loved me more than that. That you would do something like that to me. Or a loved one said to you, I can't believe you could do that to me. That you didn't love me more. And when you go through that, and you feel that, whether it's from your significant other, whether it's from your spouse, whether it's from your children yelling at you in the dead of night, whether it's just you interacting with your friend and you betrayed them or they betrayed you, or someone who is now your enemy because of the pain that broken love caused. I know that all of you have experienced that to one degree or another because we live in a world of broken, sinful human beings and you are sinful and you can't love perfectly. Here is the comfort for you. That's why God had to love you that much. That's again why God has to go so far to love you, to, to heal you from your broken heart. To redeem you from the pain that others have caused you and you have caused to your own soul by your mistakes. Jesus heals that too. Not only does Jesus love you there and do positive things for you, but He heals you here from your own mistakes and the mistakes of others. Yes, it may take time But God is working in you to redeem you, to buy you back from the pain, from Satan and from the devil, to heal you as only He can. So you can recover from the pain of this world and other broken promises. And there's even one more step that makes us even better. Because as God does that to you, as He lassos the moon for you and more, the heavens, He fills you with His love. And this is the part that's the hardest for us who have been hurt as human beings. Because like I said, we like to close ourselves off and believe that no one can love us and we don't want to open ourselves to be loved. But we also don't have as easy of a time loving others. But God says through Him and through His love, you will be able to love others again. As He heals you from the inside out, and yes, you may even be able to forgive what you thought was unforgivable. As Jesus trains you to love as He loves, and I know that may seem impossible to some of you that have been hurt so badly and think, I can't possibly forgive that. As Christians, he constantly points us back to the cross and he says, remember what you thought I couldn't forgive. Remember what you thought was impossible, a love that knows no boundaries. Now don't you dare tell me that it's impossible for me to help you forgive that too. Now notice what God has done. He's given you everything through his love. He loved you through your pain. 
He loved you so much, even though you didn't deserve it for all your sins and your betrayals. But he also filled you with his love so that you can love like him in this ugly world. That you can be beacons of hope and compassion and kindness that shouldn't be shown. At least that's what the world tells us. It's too far. It's too hard. But God says, no. It's not too hard for me. And that's how much I love you. And in me, you can love and promise like me too. So what do you want? You want the moon? You can want more than that in Jesus Christ. You can want heaven. You can want Jesus to love you no matter what, and he will. And you can want to love others that you before thought you couldn't love. And in Christ, you can have it all. Amen.